All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is focus. And this is a talent that I have not really used much. Now, I know that sometimes it's popular. Some people love it. Some people, you know, post videos about it. I've never really touched it. And until recently, I haven't really wanted to use it. But honestly, I'm kind of a little embarrassed it's taking me this long to actually really get involved with focus. It is a great talent. Now, of course, yes, with the eight times scope or with the 12 times scope, it does take a little bit getting used to. You know, it may not be exactly your play style. But honestly, it doesn't really take that long to adjust to it. It provides you with a huge amount of damage, and even in PvP, I did find it to be very useful. And, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to have two weapons with an 8x scope on it. You can have one for your long distance use, and you can have another one for up close use. So I was actually using an SMG for my up close use, and I was using an AR in PvP with an 8x scope. And it worked very well. Especially when I could down a rogue from like 30 or 50 meters away before they even knew that I was shooting at them. So it definitely has its benefits. And I mean, in PvE, it's even easier to use because obviously, you know, the enemies like to sit still a little bit more and they like to hide and cover. And it is just a huge damage boost with 50% total weapon damage. It only takes about 10 seconds of aiming to fully proc this skill. And it's actually pretty easy to maintain because all you really have to do is just keep toggling your aim button. You don't have to keep aimed in. You can just keep hitting the button over and over again and you will maintain focus at 100%. So when you do need to you know, you know, quickly turn or find a new target, all you have to do is just tap the button. So yes, I think focus is actually a really good talent. So if you've actually been ignoring focus or you just, you know, never thought that it would be part of your playstyle, give it a try. Honestly, I think you will like it. All right, another thing I want to talk about is this growing trend of people just hiding in the spawn in conflict. Now, I know it's happened. I know it's been a thing. But in the last few days, you know, the matches that I've played, I've encountered more times that people just sit in the spawn than any other time I can remember in this game. And this is insanely annoying. People just sit there with, you know, skill builds and hide there. They, they sit there. They, it's not like we push them back. They intentionally sit in there the entire time. Because you obviously, you know, are at a huge disadvantage if you try to rush them. And, you know, they've got a shield build or something taking the brunt of the damage while they just pick you off and throw hives and throw seekers. It's aggravating. Thankfully, the times that this did happen, I was a part of good groups who understood what they were doing and did not just rush in and die repeatedly giving them a win. The thing I really want to mention is that, you know, th there are really two builds that are good at fighting this tactic. Eclipse and just damage skill builds. So, I mean, you can go with hardwired or whatever combination of skill damage that you want. And the three skills that you want to use are basically the sticky bomb, the mortar turret, or the EMP jammer. Now, if you use the EMP jammer, I strongly suggest you go with Vile so you can get some more damage ticks. Um, and that works well with Eclipse as well because you can you know, spread that, you can cancel their skills, you can stop them from fighting back, you can stop them from throwing Seeker spam. It works wonderful. The Sticky Bomb can actually be fired into targets that are hiding in the spawn. They, it can be shot on the ground and used to detonate that way if they're hiding behind objects. So that works really well, especially if you're using the Fire Sticky because obviously if you're using Eclipse, you burn them, they die, all of that team is now clustered together and on fire, and that is a huge win for you because obviously they can't aim back and your team can rush in and kill them. And obviously we all know about the mortar turret. If you set up the mortar turret in a specific manner, you can shoot basically anywhere into their spawn. And it doesn't work on every spawn point. There are some spawns that are a little bit harder to aim at than others, but still, it's pretty much just a troll move and it's terrible. I can't stand it. All right, and into the last part of this video that I want to talk about. All right, so my last video was about Ravenous and kind of how the damage stacking and the damage boost and all that stuff with the explosion didn't quite make sense to me and I was finding different numbers. Well, of course, you know, in the comment section below, I get plenty of people telling me how it's supposed to work, how it works, how it, you know, doesn't work, what works with it, what doesn't work with it. And the simple fact is, look, I'm testing this stuff out. I'm seeing the results. And, you know, in this case, I put on pretty much a, a skill in blue build so that I could get a low damage without any you know red stats on there to interfere with anything. Well pretty much what I discovered was with my first round of bullets I ended up getting 2 of 10 crits and I ended up hitting for um, 161.9. But my second round was 0 of 10 crits, all right? yet the damage that my explosion did was 17.11. I tried it again, again 0 for 10 crits and somehow it went back down to 1619. 
So there is definitely some sort of funniness going on with how much damage the explosion causes. Now, of course, everyone says that explosion damage has no effect, it doesn't do anything, don't use it. I mean, I understand from a, from a very basic point of view, it doesn't seem to work. But then when you actually compare the damage numbers, there's something, again, funny going on with explosive damage. So my first round that I, so my first couple rounds that I shot, I got two of 10 crits, you know, a, a fairly similar one to that I was getting before, but this time I got one seven eleven, kind of like the, the strong damage that I got from zero of 10 with the first mask. Yet, when I tried it again, I again got two of 10 crits, but this time, the damage had increased itself to 1802. So this was a boost from any of the numbers that I got with the first mask without the explosive damage. Now look, I'm, I'm not going to go into everything that I tested out because look, I tested out a bunch of things. There's some uninterrupted footage here of me just putting on different things and just taking shots, showing you that you know it doesn't matter how many crits I get, it doesn't matter how much crit damage I have, there are changes to the actual damage structure of that last explosive damage. I don't know what it is, I don't know what causes it, but there is something that affects it. And it is also seen with other things that you equip that are normally said to not be effective on it. Like I said, this covered explosive damage. There was a difference between my mask that there shouldn't have been. So there is something that does not match up with what everyone is trying to tell me that they know about this weapon. Now. I understand we've all got opinions, but the point of this is to get to the facts. I don't need opinions. I want to know what is causing this weapon to behave like this and if this is a glitch and that the developers should fix it because if it is a glitch, you know, I, I don't want to be playing around with it for, you know, three or so months before the developers are like, oh, there's a serious glitch here. I, I don't want to find out that, oh, there is a serious glitch here and no one really realized it and then they nerf it to, you know, all hell and basically it becomes a useless gun. I, I don't want that. I don't want somebody to find out how this can be cheesed and basically just leads to a whole new meta in the game that basically destroys PvP for everyone. I don't want it. So I would like to figure out what is actually causing this and if it can be fixed or if it can be avoided or if it can be manipulated by, you know, bad intentioned people in the DZ. So that's really the point of this, okay? That is the point of this testing, to figure out what is going on, why it works this way, what is causing these things, and if the developers seriously need to take a look at it. But that'll do it for this video, guys. And if you wanna see the rest of the testing, you know, just keep watching, I'll let it play. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.